time to build some weird switches. How are you feeling about this so far? <laughs> Over the years of doing what I do, I have bought a lot of Switch stuff. Probably too much, definitely too much. And in the spirit of Halloween, I thought, let's get a little weird. Just kind of grab bag all the different things I've ever used and see what kind of monstrosities I can put together. So we got bags with left Joy-Cons, right Joy-Cons, docks, other stuff. I'm not entirely sure what I'm gonna grab and Let's just see where this goes. We're gonna start with the Mario Red Switch. That is a full red body, except for a black kickstand, which is kind of annoying. This was released as part of celebrating Mario's anniversary back in 2020. Uh, and it came with a special set of matching red Joy-Cons, which made our third red Joy-Con color. Probably not gonna grab that here, so let's see what we get. All right, we got a Hori Split Pad, which is actually, I mean, pretty standard these days for me. Uh, you know, this has been one of the first official big Joy-Con options you could grab. Uses a D-pad, really comfortable. It's actually been my go-to for a lot of stuff, so I'm not mad at that. And it's a Pac-Man one, so the design's cool. Oh, stuff in here. Oh, what is this? No. I grabbed the same split pad again somehow. How many split pads are in here? I got another left Joy-Con. <laughs> We're gonna put that back in there. All right, here we go, here we go. I, I, I like what I'm feeling here. This thing, I don't remember the name of this. So basically I wanted to do a video on different Joy-Cons that were weird and I grabbed this one because it just has the ABXY, which I had to try. I've said a few times in the past with GameCube stuff that I absolutely love that ABXY layout. It doesn't make sense for all games, but back during the GameCube time, uh, the games that were built around it, love that layout. Not actually a great controller in the case of this Joy-Con, but I loved that there was just options popping up trying that out. What are you? So not a dock for the system. Uh, this is a charge stand. <laughs> you put all the Joy-Cons on it and it lights up. I think these actually like shoot out a color too for when you know it's charging or full charge. Uh, let's go for another, let's see if we can get a dock. Like a dock dock. Dock, this is heavy duty dock. Oh, this one. So this is a Hyperkin N64 dock. Uh, this came out at a really awkward time actually, cause this was released right after the really, 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 really ridiculously heavy wave of people bricking their switches on third-party Joy-Cons because of the way that the Switch handles power input. Uh, and so I remember when getting this one, it was kind of this weird situation of like, wow, this is really cool. I love the color. I love the concept. I'm really afraid to use this. That is, that is cool. I don't know if I'm gonna put the red one on it. To be honest, I'm still scared to this day, but. Hey, and then. And that. Of course, I reached for the very bottom. Oh, so this is actually kind of funny. Back when I first started doing YouTube and you're seeing a lot of accessories come out for the Switch, a lot of it was just repurposing stuff that already existed for tablets. Like I'm pretty sure that whatever company made this one, okay, this is Power A, probably is using a design that either they previously had for a tablet stand or some other company made and they just went with it. And you know, they give it a cool looking body, they make it red, put Mario on it. Uh, and it's a handy way to use your Switch in tabletop mode. I mean, it's really the main goal, right? Is so you can just set it up right there. I like how I accidentally made this very Mario-ish. I mean, it, it's not the Joy-Cons, but hey, we got red body with that. So that's a good tie-in. You just want to do tabletop mode and you didn't trust the kickstand. I never use the kickstand on the regular Switch, like any of the older models. It just always breaks off. I hate it. I don't like replacing it. This was a standard anytime I want to do tabletop play with the older models. Controller, Hori fighting pad, to be honest, I think I grabbed this and haven't really thoroughly used it yet. <laughs> I should actually, I forgot I had this one. I wanna use this now, cause I wasn't really playing a lot of fighting games actively on my Switch outside of Smash Brothers, which you don't really wanna use a six button setup like this, at least not to my knowledge. Usually a lot of my more traditional fighters I've been doing on PlayStation, uh, but I've been playing a lot of stuff on Switch again, especially with the collections, like the Capcom fighting one. I don't remember when I got this one. Oops, sorry, Hori. That's a bunch of weird stuff for the red Switch. Uh, I think it actually, you know, like you get, you had a big comfy Joy-Con with a D-pad. You got the ABXY with the GameCube style with not actually great buttons. There's probably a better version of this Joy-Con out by now. You know, hey, that's not too bad looking. All right, let's, let's do the OLED. Now, of course, this is the new OLED switch. This is the one I got last year, a little earlier than I was kind of supposed to. I don't know if I actually bothered anyone and didn't know about that. I hope not. What do we get? What are you? Oh wait, this is the thing I put in. This was the Joy-Con that was in the wrong bucket. 
you know, I'll talk about this real quick, real quick, because this is kind of a weird double situation. Um, I don't know why these are stuck together the way they are. So this has a cover on it that I just thought was really cool looking. This was one that was made for like Legend of Zelda theme. Uh, it does upraise the body a little bit to where the buttons are a little more awkward to hit, but it looks cool. Uh, however, this is actually on top of a paint job. These are Pokemon uh, Joy-Cons that we got off of Etsy, I want to say, or we found out a local guy who was making them, but I love this design. I think we got these when the Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee ones were coming out because I was like, there's so many cool things you could do for your Joy-Cons. And they didn't. So this was the misplaced one though. Let's, let's, let's see what else we got in here. Nah. Oh, this, this, okay. This is actually really cool because this was the second shell exchange I ever did. Second or third, I don't remember. Because we did, the very first time I ever did a shell exchange on a Joy-Con, it was a white one. Uh, and that was like a big deal to me because I'd never done any kind of like modification like that before. It's not the most difficult thing in the world, but you know, when you've never messed with things uh, like that, it was a little intimidating. Uh, and then after that, I did an atomic purple and then we swapped it to this jungle green design because it was actually a tie-in back to this guy again. We, we did this so that I had a matching Joy-Con set that would go with this. I really wish Nintendo would just actually do transparent designs like this. Is this a Joy-Con? What is it? Oh, NES controller. These were released for when they first started doing uh, the, you know, the NES library on Nintendo Switch Online. Uh, these ones are cool because you can actually slot them on the on the Switch. It's not really usable that way. It's not supposed to be, uh, but you can charge that way. Later ones got rid of that. Like the N64 one, can't slide it, which I don't know, like I get it. It's a little bit of a monstrosity looking, but it'd be funny. This is not, this wouldn't work this way, but I'm gonna leave it on. Oh, I haven't used this in a while. You had to go digging for this because this was in its own special case or something, right? This is the Ojo. I remember this was a big deal because this is one of those things that I think when it very first came out, because it got announced well before it actually released, you had a bunch of knockoffs come out like right before that were not as good. Uh, and I don't think I covered any of those. I think I waited till this one actually released. This is a projector dock. It actually has a little projection set up, not like the strongest in the world or anything. You know, you drop your switch in it and then it just shoots out the image on whatever you're doing. We did some weird shoots for this too. I think we like went outside and set it up against a brick wall or something. This thing was cool. I haven't messed with the projector docks in a while. Maybe that's something worth revisiting actually. You give me video ideas right now, like while we're doing this. There's gotta be new versions of this by this point, right? But yeah, this is, this is a cool weird thing that I definitely kind of forgot we had. I mean, it's, it has its own dedicated carrying case. I think I stored it back away in that and has not been broken out since. Oops. All right, miscellaneous. We got other stuff. We got other stuff. What do we got? Oh, okay. These are actually really cool. This is from, we might have to look it up later. I think these were made by Retro Fighters though, uh, but they're cute little NES carts. It has a slot for a Switch game. Do I have a Switch game nearby? Just the, the OLED's my main one I'm using right now. Okay, I got Dragon Quest. I got Dragon Quest. So these are cute because you just kind of slide it in and it just looks like a little NES card. And then you press it back down, it comes back out. So, I mean, it's a little over the top. Uh, and for how many Switch games I have, I definitely don't have enough of these little cases to fit them all. And then we'll get one more, we'll get one more weird thing. The I, oh, I forget how to pronounce this, Ipega? This company's weird because they. this was the one where they definitely repurposed a lot of tablet stuff and then they got into more specific things for the Switch. This is a controller slash dock. So what you would do is you would put your Switch in it and it's supposed to be like a little arcade setup, right? So again, I didn't play as many fighters on Switch for a while. It's a neat idea. I think we did a, I forget if this was the same video or not. We did like a takeoff from this where we also built another one where it actually had a slot to put the Switch in and it looked like a little cab setup. It was actually also a really weirdly formatted video because I think I I did the whole thing interview style, like I was being interviewed, which I was behind the scenes, but the person wasn't talking in video. So everyone was like, who's this guy talking to? Like, what is happening? All right, you know what? I'm just curious if it's actually in all these bags because I didn't assemble these. So let's just pour it all out and I'll assemble a switch based on what I actually use these days. So miscellaneous stuff. So many split pad pros. Oh, this was, you know, my very first shell exchange. This is the one, it's just a white shell with the colorful buttons. And then the left one, I think originally I left the buttons on and then they later made a white one with a D-pad. And so I did that one, swapping it out. Well, obviously I'm gonna use the OLED because I mean, look, I've got a lot of sentimental attachment to certain older designs and there's special editions that are cool, but uh, the OLED screen is just beautiful. I, we have so much cool stuff and I'm actually kind of boring. Like there's so many like interesting options going on, but at the end of the day, really, and I've said this in a couple videos, like I really just like the regular, the, the split pad pros, like, I think the bin box are a really cool alternative, but I'll use a wireless controller if I really care about wireless connection. Just the basic, this is the original one too, actually. That was the Damon X Machina design and you would never actually tell because the only actual branding other than color choice is the X button. 
is the Damon X Machina logo. Docs, docs, docs. My favorite doc's actually at home, so I can't use it. But I would probably go with the Monster Hunter design. I mean, this, this one's awesome. I have to give, I, I feel mean not pointing out. I have to give props to Animal Crossing. Uh, I love that it's actually not a black dock with like decals on it. But at the same time, I just think the Monster Hunter one is really cool looking, so I would stick with that. Uh, and then as far as controllers go, this one? Oh yeah, it like lights up. Yeah, because it has like the glow effect. Yeah, I think I was gonna try this controller out and I didn't like it because it's really, it looks cool, but I don't like the plastic material it's made out of because it's one of those things where as soon as you start sweating, you actually like really, it actually becomes slippery. Uh, and then also now that I'm holding it afterwards, it kind of leaves a bit of a sticky feeling. That's not, yeah. This thing, man, you're bringing back memories right now. There's a lot of stuff. There's, a, there's history in some of this stuff. I got too much Switch stuff. Honestly, this is actually still only a fraction of all the stuff. Uh, the storage area upstairs is kind of scary right now. Uh, but let me know down below. I mean, what stuff did we kind of flash back on right now that you remember? What stuff have you grabbed? Uh, what is the actual setup you like using for your Switch? As always, hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed the video, subscribe if you haven't yet, and uh, see you guys later. Happy Halloween, I guess. I was gonna wear a lab coat and this is the closest thing we had because we didn't buy one because I didn't think about that. And we're like three days away from Halloween. So they're just sold out like everywhere.